There's very three flights of stairs. Okay, it's 10 minutes after seven. Getting old. Okay, so let's figure out. There's about uh, 10 after ten after seven. Here, come on here a minute. There's something wrong with this camera. Come on here. I don't know what it is. No, there's something, I'm not, there's something wrong. So, yeah. Those stairs, eh? Glad I'm a non-smoker. So, I know. Yeah. Steep. So, anyway, we're here. Hi. And, oh yeah, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Oh, Bunny. So, uh, I say that uh, we're here to, the, for the new shelter. They're gonna have a temporary, what do you call it? Uh, expansion, extension, yeah. until uh, March. And there's no way in the world the snob is going to stand up there and say, yeah. uh, I don't mm -hmm. think, I don't want this in our neighborhood. Yeah. A lot of people approach me today, strangers. Yeah. Hey, when is the meeting? When's the meeting? And I see there's going to be a lot of people here. Yeah. And I'm going to put the camera on, leave the camera. Yeah. And I think the idiot mayor won't be there. I didn't see him, but I didn't look that hard. I'm glad I'm not here when you're on this out of breath here. <laughs> so, I mean, I felt ashamed. <laughs> it's the cold. Yes. Uh, is that what it is? No, the summertime, the <laughs> same thing. That's what I'm going to blame tree, it on. Tree places there. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen We need some here? cardio. What do you think is going to happen here? I feel that uh, there's going to be, um, I feel that I'm hoping, I'm praying that there's going to be an extension um, added on. I've been to this, to the temporary shelter set up. It's a beautiful location. It, um, it's exactly what we need for people that don't feel comfortable for whatever reason to go into the regular shelter. And no one should be out in the cold. No one. And I believe that there's going to be police in there. We, well, we've never been there. Yeah, I, I felt that already. You Being a medium, already. yes, I feel that uh, already in, in plain clothes. So, yeah. so and there's a lot of people with mental issues in there. Yeah. Uh, they might get paranoid. They see the camera. We're mm. trying out, but we're yeah. gonna show what's going on here. Absolutely. And let's see if the people have the support. I'm gonna keep this camera on for 15 minutes and see. Shoot. What? What's that? Group on homelessness, and in that role, I've taken on the role of being a proponent for this applicant. 
for this application. Uh, what we've been working at as a community is really trying to look at the creation of a um, public pool shelter, just to be able to address some of the overflow in terms of street homelessness we've been seeing here in Fredericton recently. And while I work in the community, we just want to distract this effort. There's a number of different agencies that have been working tirelessly behind the scenes to be able to move quickly in terms of responding to the need of the community. I, uh, this doesn't even really capture you know, who's out there, and I know this doesn't necessarily apply, but I just really wanted to share that with the gallery as well, which is um, thank you to everybody who's given their time and hard resources to make this happen. Uh, with the next slide, I'd ask you to advance that. I think everyone knows the reason that we're here is we're, we've been seeing a rise in street homelessness in Fredericton. Um, it's apparent when people see uh, setups like the Ted Hamlet off of Smith Street. But beyond that, we're seeing a rise of people in woodland areas and behind commercial developments. But not in homelessness is something that's quite invisible. But for people working in this sector, it's something that's, that's always really front of mind. Um, there's going to be a number of reasons in terms of us understanding why this year is so unique. It's not a crisis that sort of happened, emerged, or happened right overnight. It's been in the making for quite some time. Here in our community, we've seen sort of a steady decrease in terms of vacancy. And at the same time, we're seeing a steady increase in terms of an average cost of month, uh, monthly rent. So an average one-bedroom apartment right now is $710. But something that's remained static, though, with income assistance at 537 a month for a single individual. And many of the folks who are most vulnerable rely on income assistance to get by. So just even that very fact of that nature is going to mean more and more people aren't necessarily going to be able to use our housing market successfully to be able to answer homelessness like they would have in the past. There's other factors that contribute to that, but I would say most strikingly is that we're seeing that sort of crisis. Um, I'd like you to advance to the next slide. I don't want to use up too much of our time, but something that I wanted to note is really the evolution. Um, our application for an under the cold shelter is something that's happened really rapidly. And out of the cold shelter is something that in community has been brought on board in the last resort quite often when typical emergency services no longer are able to meet the demand uh, for people on the streets. And that's what's happened in Fredericton. Uh, when we saw the rise of street homelessness in our communities, uh, to be able to, to mobilize something like an out of the cold, uh, as a community, we knew we would need provincial resources to help staff and to operate that properly. Uh, so November 9th, we saw the formation of our provincial government. On the 15th, I met with the mayor, who requested that we would host a community planning meeting to be able to discuss a community response to looking at how we would create a of the cold. And during that session, it would be our work as community members to review what sort of assets do we have collectively that we could bring to the table so that we'd be able to do this at low cost and bring it to the tax dollar for the taxpayer. So on November 21st, we had our community session at William Reese Center. We had approximately 50 different stakeholders attend uh, from a range of different backgrounds, mostly belonging to the department agencies. During that session, we evaluated what do we have currently on the table in terms of resources for space, what do we have on hand in terms of resources for materials and volunteers, staffing. And it was during that session where the took court that said in 91, Bud Six Street was identified as a possible or a very viable and immediate solution in terms of the location for this project. Uh, two days later, myself, um, the chair of the Fredericton Housing First Fund, uh, and the mayor, we were in front of um, staff from the Department of Social Development to make a formal request in terms of what was the gap that was needed based on what we saw in terms of resources that we were able to bring together on the 21st. Um, so by the time we reached Monday, November the 23rd, we were able to resubmit to the provincial government for what does that look like in terms of have resources, what do we have in terms of our request for um, for students. And all in that same time period, we were able to move really quickly on the 23rd, is to be able to have our fire inspector come in and to move to the community building inspector. So based on that, we really had to sort of develop our, our plan and our strategy, what sort of resources we would need to make this space suitable, to have individuals from our streets come and stay there. Um, by that Monday, the detailed request was put into the province, and on the 27th, uh, we presented our media release to the community. And I know for a lot of people in the neighborhood, and well beyond, it was the first time they really heard of this effort. But just keeping in mind, it was only six more days before the initial discussion of opening it out of the situation. Uh, and just really when we're looking at such massive numbers, 
I think it's hard for people to relate to the numbers of people who've actually been outside of Fredericton. Uh, no one is really trying to catastrophize the situation. It just simply means that we're looking at a minimum of 35 different unique individuals who are able to find the same person who is outside. So the need to be able to act is the principle with the early return and the long term. So by the 28th of the first submitted our TUV application as early as we can with them, that this would be part of the process that we have to be heard of. We saw an emergency council meeting uh, for folks that come together quickly on the 29th, and by the 1st, we were able to have a letter of identification from the province so that we were opening temporarily at the that date. And so that's a little bit of a background of the timeline that we have to proceed from the 21st on. And the real sort of turning point for us is the community was knowing that we have to have a so presently, the property that we're looking at, 791 Brunswick Street, uh, I just wanted to use a couple of minutes to go through some of the safety features and the staffing to really look at how the building is going to be used and hopefully you have questions for us while we're here in the room to review that. I really wanted to thank um, our planning department. I know that we put a lot of stress on their role and their workload as well. I appreciate the, the favorable uh, recommendation for this development and know that the conditions that they've set out are reasonable and I just hope to show how we would be able to meet those as a community. So the next slide, please. As everyone can see here in this slide, we're looking at, in terms of just the street view of where our application is for, is it's, it's sort of in an interesting position in terms of we're nestled between sort of the top of the city center zone and on the other end of the park.
And here, as we proceed to the second floor, we have four other speaking areas included in the building, with also our bank account. As we find the case, uh, as we request the fire inspector, where we want to see our, our exits, uh, where we want to see the installation of fire extinguishers, and also emergency lighting in the event that there is a power outage. On this level, we also have two main bathrooms that are fully equipped, so that gas flow there can be seen warm shower uh, as well. So we're going to
75 or 74 percent of the time we've been at full capacity to date. Um, an average shift when we started at 8 and at 7.30 includes 11 staff and volunteers across that uh, 11 and a half hour span. Uh, we've had 120 different volunteers across community who signed up and have registered for shifts and also stay in this operation. Demographically, we've seen uh, approximately 60% men, 40% women, and the age range has gone from 18 to 70 years old. Uh, during this time frame over the last 11 days and with 191 sleeps, we've had zero ambulance visits, we've had zero police calls, we've had zero by law enforcement visits or orders, we've had zero direct complaints from neighbors to OCT staff organizers. But we have had received 18 letters of support from people inside of the community saying that they are comfortable with this usage. Um, I said, and many of us have been saying in media, an emergency shelter is not a solution to a complex problem like homelessness. This is definitely a stopgap measure and a mandate that none of us are proud to be pursuing. This is something that we come to community with in the state of crisis. And uh, really, we hope that now that all eyes are looking at the question of homelessness, it isn't something new. Our shelter has been around in our community since the mid 1980s. Um, there's been an ongoing need for solutions. We see people who get trapped in increasingly longer periods of time. So we would be honest with the scope of this committee. I just implore our community to keep their eyes on this issue and to continue to lend their support to more longer term solutions. Um, this is one small step on the way, but really the big prize is for us to be working with PAC and looking at questions around the rezoning and areas and land use for housing development to build better densification and good community mix. Um, that's really what I had to share in terms of an overview on my part, and I appreciate your patience and letting me walk you through that. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have any questions for the applicant? No? <coughs> yeah. Thank you for you, Mr. Chair. Um, thanks, Dave, for your uh, uh, like really thorough and comprehensive presentation on that. Um, you, I, I just have a couple of questions in regards to the community of education. Uh, the money you need that, that you have, that you mentioned towards the end. Um, and I can appreciate that there were people there who had some concerns in regards to that. Is there, are, have the channels, I, I assume the channels can be left open for that conversation to continue so that, there's, that it doesn't just stop today or tomorrow? Um. In the invitation that was sent out to people, that was providing them with an the email contact, and then based on the outcome of tonight, I follow up with a phone number. Part of that event, too, was to offer tours, just because, again, people do feel like group think or it's harder to actually express your concerns. So we did offer tours to people within the community on Tuesday and Wednesday. And our hope is, is that if we'd be able to do just a follow up community meeting discussion as well, I think a lot of our concerns are often really fear based, but there are many situations where we want to be able to work through those fears and discussions with people who have some agency to hopefully make it better or to mitigate the fears. So that would be part of the process. Thanks. Um, the application is for uh, uh, the Cooper Use Variance. It ends on March 31st. So April 1st, um, you know, that's, that, that March 31st is the date, I think, for us in five. Um, in some communities, it would extend as well as to the You see in Halifax, they're cold and it's much more temperate because they're coastal. Theirs runs until the 29th of April. And so this seems to be very controversial. This is a middle ground and really just trying to look at the most extreme needs. Uh, so I, I guess the need is there is there going to be work within the community or for the various agencies to address the long-term situation here? 